Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the recap of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8. Today, we will be going over episode 11, which was the talent extravaganza. So, I'm just going to be really quickly going over all the eliminated contestants' performances, uh, thoughts, feelings, and opinions on who should have been, you know, the top two, I guess. Then we'll go over the lip sync and predictions for the finale. This is going to be kind of a... I would assume a short and sweet sort of episode here. And also, please support the writers and actors who are currently going on strike uh, in order to, you know, get better pay and, you know, better compensation for their work that they do. Um, these videos, as far as I've, I did research, I, anything I do on this channel is completely unaffected and I'm not like a, I'm not like a crossing the picket line by doing any of this because I'm essentially critiquing reality television and reality television is not part of what they're striking with. It is purely film and television, scripted television, and also critics can still do their thing. So as far as I'm aware, I'm, I'm entirely good. Nothing regarding the strike will interrupt any of the content I plan on making for this channel. Uh, but, you know, again, please do, please research and support them and their mission because it's a really, it's a really important thing that people get the compensation that they deserve for their work. So I'm going to be going over these in like batches because I, I like, there's only so much to talk about with like one minute performances. You know what I mean? Uh, so I guess let's talk about Monica's first. Monica, I mean, just in the past few days, not a sulking clock, not a sulking clock just became fucking viral, which I love that for Monica. She deserves it. She deserves all the love in the world. Um, but like, it was a fine performance. Honestly, I like, it's kind of iconic that she basically said no words. And <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of funny, but she, she did a good job in the performance for sure. Nisha did a solid job too. It would think in terms of all their performances, it was one of the weaker ones, but like, I really, I don't have much to say. I feel like she did a fine job. Uh, Kasha, I think, did a great job with her performance. I really like the concept. You know, it was kind of it was kind of like a spoken word piece. Truly, is what it actually was. And the you know back and forth between like the calm and you know like her kind of you know I guess I, I guess I'd say her brand of which is you know you know kind of the story times, the family friendly, the encouraging inspiration, and you know openness to, you know, you know, things outside, you know, the binary gender, you know, ideas that are per perpetuated in our society. Um, I think it was really good. I really enjoyed Kasha's. And I think if I were to choose, Kasha would be in the top with Lala. I really think she did a great job here. Okay, next up we have Darian, James, and Kahana. Darian, I think, did also a pretty fine job here. Um, I like similar critiques to Nasha where I, I really don't think anybody did a bad job by any means, but I think looking at all of the performances, I think Darian's was probably on the bottom half, but you know, I, again, I really don't have anything like particularly negative to say about it either. Uh, James's performance I thought was funny. I really like the gag of it of being like, I have no talent. I just have breasts is like, okay. Like I look, it's a clear concept. She goes for it. You know, it fits in with kind of the essence and character that is James Mansfield. I think she did a pretty good job. And I did say that I would put Kasha on the top over her, but again, I do, I do still think James is like my third. So I really, you know, she did a pretty good job. And Kahana would probably be my fourth, I'd say. Um, she did a really nice job. I like the tricks and the dips and the splits and everything were all super, super good. The actual like physical performance of it was really one of the best of the night. Uh, but in terms of like the content, like the lyrics and the way that that was kind of sold, it was, it was like, okay to me, you know, I think she did a pretty damn solid job though. Last but least, <laughs> I meant to say last but not least, holy shit. <laughs> Last but not least, God, that's so f accidentally shady. I don't even think that because Lala's was my favorite, and Alexis's I feel like was pretty all right, and then Jessica's was also was I'd say also pretty all right. I th I, I 
Jessica's and Alexis are on the same levels for me. I thought Alexis's concept was pretty fun, but the execution was slightly like I'm, I was slightly confused by. Jessica's, I think, was performance. I think was entirely fine. I have again no complaints about it, but no like gushing that I feel like I need to do about it. Um, Lala, I think, did a stellar job. The you know I, I, Lala's track, I believe, did was Ocean Kelly. I forget it because. Candy's track that she did for her performance, Ocean Kelly was like, like, you know, had actual lyrics that she sung. I forget off the top of my head if Lala's track had lyrics sung by Ocean too, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, if you don't know who Ocean Kelly is, you should look up Ocean Kelly because she's fucking iconic. Um, but if you do know her from, from anything, it would probably be from, um, Lala's performance on the season 13 reunion uh, was was a bad bitch tip. I think that's what it was. I was right. It's called bad bitch tip. You should you should look it up if you if you do not know it because it is fucking good. Um, but yeah, Lala I think was my favorite. It was just a really solid performance from her. I, I like no no complaints about it. This picture is so fucking blurry, and I did not realize until I just started staring at it right now. Uh, but James and Lala were the top two. I Do I agree? I Again, I think I would have done Kasha and Lala, but if it wasn't, if it wasn't, I guess, Kasha and Lala, then my second option would be James and Lala. So, you know, I'd still say a pretty solid decision. Um, and this was an interesting lip sync. It was, it was really... It's like one of the happiest lip syncs we've seen in a long time on Drag Race, which I really think says something. <laughs> and that uh, I think all All Star seasons would just be better if we had the top two, like we like we had. I just think it'd be better. I don't like the lip sync assassins. It kind of worked in All Star Six, but I didn't like it in All Stars Five. I did not like it this season. And I think the top two format has worked pretty damn well in every season that it's been in. So can they just go back to that? Because, okay, spoilers, skip the, for the next like 15 seconds or so, uh, if you don't want to hear it. Or, or 50, you can't even skip 15, just skip 20. Uh, but for allegedly for All Stars 9, they're doing a no eliminations format, um, which I don't really like. I. I don't, I don't think I'm going to like it. We'll have to see, but I don't think I'm going to like it. It makes sense with All-Star 7 because they're all winners and stuff, but, you know, we'll just have to see if we actually like it or not. But, um, yeah, this lip sync, I do think, I do think uh, Lala won it, but I under completely understand why they gave them both the win because they both kind of, you know, they both are doing similar things, similar vibes. They both were, you know, just like having fun. Uh, James had a good reveal. I think Lala performed slightly better, but you know James had like a reveal and had like a mo had that kind of like moment, so to say. So you know, I think it was actually pretty even overall. I, if I had to choose, I would have given it to Lala, but I completely get why they did a, a double win here. And let me talk about the multiplying votes for a second. I don't think I like it. I really don't think I like it because it kind of it almost feels like it undercuts the whole of what the point of it was anyway, you know what I mean? Because like, let's just, let's j just to theorize for just a moment. If Jimbo were to have been eliminated at any point during the season and Jimbo, and based off of Rue's reaction to the shows, to the, to the talents, Jimbo would have probably been in the top if she had been eliminated at this point. That essentially just means that like, if Jimbo gets that lip sync win, then Jimbo wins handedly because like we know that Jimbo would have gotten a shit ton of votes because Jimbo's a fan favorite regardless so I feel like in, in certain scenarios giving people this like power essentially guarantees them a win which just isn't fun like I think with James and Lala I think it there's still room for it to be you know a, any number of people but I feel like it could have gone awry so quickly and I don't know why they did it because again if even, and even if James and Lala, like, let's just say, had the most votes without the multiplier, if either of them win, it's still, regardless, it's still going to feel kind of, like, undercut. It's still going to, like, undercut their win of winning the fame games, you know? Because I assume they're not releasing the votes. I think it'd be interesting, but I assume they're not doing it. But it would just make it feel like the whole point of waiting the season for the fame games just for somebody 
to get double the votes and win would feel pointless. You know what I mean? I don't think James or Lala are winning the Fame Games just based off what I've seen online, but we'll have to see in, you know, T minus however many days until the finale, like three. Uh, so, yeah. So we still have our top two of Jimbo and Candy. Who's gonna win the season? I would wager Jimbo, but I would say the split in my brain of like attempting to guess who's gonna win, I'd say there's like an 80% chance it's gonna be Jimbo and like a 20% chance it's gonna be Candy. Actually, I'm gonna revise that. I'm gonna say, cause you know, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say 75% chance of Jimbo, 20% chance of Candy, 5% chance of the tie. I think there's a, just a little inkling that it could be with this top two, but we'll have to see if that's actually the case. I don't think, I don't, I don't think they do it again, but there's a chance. There is a, there is a chance. So I'm, I'm not going to say that there isn't, but that is going to be it for this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you wish. Leave your thoughts, feelings, and opinions down below. As always, I will leave my Twitter handle down below if you want to go follow me on there. Thank you so much for watching uh, that all winter simulator that I did the other day. That one, that video performed super well, I feel like. Thank you for watching it if you did. And if you haven't, go watch it. It's a good video. <laughs> so, again, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, take care. Bye-bye.